Thank you very much for coming today to be a part of the June team flag raising event. This is an event that we want everyone to join us and celebrate because it's an historic event. My name is Famod Kone. I'm the Associate Commissioner at the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs. I want to thank all of you for coming. And we want to start off this program quickly by inviting Mr. Arthur Piccolo. He is the Chairman of the Bowling Green Association. He's our host. And Mr. Arthur Piccolo. Thank you all for coming. I'm glad this is becoming an annual event here. We have so many flag raisings here since 1996, but even more since Mayor Eric Adams has been in office. He has embraced raising of flags here. I wanted to, rather than just raise the flag, I'd love to see there be some symbolic value out of this occasion, something specific of symbolic value. Um, I put something together that I call the Juneteenth Declaration at Bowling Green. I'm not going to read all of this. And I also gave a comparable letter to the mayor, but I think some of these words explain the situation. Bowling Green is where New Amsterdam was created and governed by a private company, the Dutch West India Company, the largest and most prominent Dutch slave trading company responsible for bringing tens of thousands of enslaved Africans to this new world of the Americas. New Amsterdam at Bowling Green was the Dutch West India Company's global headquarters, the very center of its slave enterprise beginning in 1625. The year is very important, 1625. Likewise, it was the Dutch West India Company and its director general here the next year, 1626, that took Manhattan Island from the Lenape tribe here for many generations before the Dutch, in a fraudulent land deal, took it from them. The flag of the city of New York glorifies both the enslavement of Africans and the abuse of Native Americans. It features the year 1625, the very year these atrocities began. Let us declare today here at Bowling Green that New York City must immediately stop using the insulting flag and design a New York, New York City flag that features the year 1653 when settlers freed themselves from the Dutch West India Company and became a real city with their own charter. But as much further than in Lower Manhattan near Bowling Green that we name the pedestrian bridge over the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel the African American Patriots Bridge to honor all the African Americans throughout history, both enslaved and free, who have fought and many died for America's cause. You know this better than I do. Beginning with the American Revolution, enslaved and then freed Africans have fought and died in every American war. I would love to see us honor them here in Lower Manhattan. There's a wonderful pedestrian bridge just a block from here on Morris Street over the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. I hope you will join me in convincing the mayor that it, and the governor that it should be named the African American Patriots Bridge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. I will now call on Atina Rotnin. She is the executive director and founder of the Juneteenth NYC. Hello everyone. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Athenia Rodney. I'm the CEO and founder of the 15 year old Juneteenth celebration that we have here and the largest celebration we have here in the New York City area. So again, uh, welcome to this profound and historic moment that we have here. Um, this is our second year of doing a flag raising and we, we, are, we are really excited about doing this. Today we stand together to honor the journey from enslaved to freedom and to re-educate ourselves of the pivotal moments that shaped our history. Juneteenth, marked by General Orders Number 3, which we'll be sharing a little bit later, read on June 19, 1865, with all the letting all the slaves know that they were free in Galveston, Texas. This was a monumental step towards liberty following President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation of 1863. The American Civil War being won on April 9, 1865, when Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to the Union General Ulysses S. Grant in Virginia. That's amazing 
y'all. He surrendered. That means that he knew that he could not win. However, it took more than two years, two and a half years, for the arrival of over 2,000 Union soldiers, part of the 13th Army Corps, led by Major Gordon Granger in Texas, to enforce the freedoms. Today, we remember and reflect on these moments, understanding that this day is not just a celebration, but the reawakening of the principles of equality and equity of justice. As we kick off this month-long celebration, not just a day, let us honor the legacy of those who fought for freedom and those who continue to strive for equality. May the raising of the flag that we do later on today serve as a beacon of hope and a reminder of enduring spirit of our community in working together in unity. Thank you for joining us today. Together, let us keep the spirit of Juneteenth alive and work towards a future where liberty and justice truly belongs to all. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Uh, I want to call on Anthony Taylor. He's the liaison for the African-American community. He's one of the team members that work to organize the event. Anthony? Good morning, everybody. My name is Anthony Taylor, as you know. Um, I'm the African-American liaison for Mayor's Office of Community Affairs Unit. I would like to, on behalf of the Mayor's Office, I would like to thank everybody for coming out and um, for the Juneteenth flag raising. And let's have a good event. Thank you. All right, so we are going to go through our schedule. So next we have um, the Liberation and Drummers group, Gregory Taylor from the Staten Island Community Alliance. All right, there you go. We must call libation before us. We must give praise to all those who came before us. We can never honor our ancestors enough. So with that, libation is nothing more than giving praise and honor to the Creator and giving thanks to all those who came before us. So with that, We give honor and praise to the Creator, who is sometimes known as the Christ, who is sometimes known as Jinyame, who is sometimes known as Oladamari, who is sometimes known as Allah, who is sometimes known as Ankalukulu, who is sometimes known as Vishnu, who is sometimes known as Jehovah, who is sometimes known as Bakalau. We give all praise and thanks to the Creator, the Creator of all things, the creator, the creative energy that runs through all things. And we say, Madasi, thank you. Whoa. We give praise and thanks to our ancestors, all those who not only gave of their sweat, but of their blood and of their lives so that we may be here today. We can never, ever honor our ancestors enough. It is because of them, those shoulders that we stand upon, that we are here today. And we say, Madasi, Madasi, Pai. We give thanks and praise and say, Madasi, for our progeny, those who come after us. It is important, it is imperative that we be the foundation that they stand upon. We have to hold ourselves accountable and be the people that our ancestors were so that they may have a foundation to stand upon. And we say Madasi for our progeny. We say Madasi, 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 Pau. Yo. Uh, yes. Not easy at my age to do this, <laughs> but a small price to pay. All right, 
Can we please, uh, can we please give uh, Gregory Taylor from the Staten Island Community Alliance a round of applause? as they did libations, as you shared, that is a part of a, a historical thing that we do to honor our ancestors. And I just want to give you all um, a moment to think of an ancestor that you would like to honor on today, um, to give them thanks and reverence for what they did for us to be here. Um, all those who were sold on this space, um, before this became a land of finance, we were the finance, we were the, we were the stock that was sold. Okay, thank you. All right, next up we have, thank you. Next up we have uh, the history from Tanisha Morrison from Juneteenth in Queens. Is it still morning? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Tanisha Morrison. I am the co-founder of The Voice of Youth Changes Everything Incorporated, um, and we host a Juneteenth program in Queens called Juneteenth and Queens that's happening on June 19, 2024, between 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. in Roy Wilkins Park. When peace come, they read the emancipation law to the colored people said former enslaved person Pierce Harper in 1937 as he recalled how slaves in Texas learned that the Civil War had ended and they had been freed at least two years earlier. Juneteenth in General Orders Number 3 read on June 19, 1865, announcing that all slaves are free is one of Galveston's and the nation's most important historical moments. U.S. President Abraham Lincoln announced the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22, 1862 issued under powers granted to the president, quote, as a fit and necessary war measure, unquote. The proclamation declared that on the first day of January A.D. 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of the state, the people, oops, sorry, the people whereof of shall then be in rebellion against the United States shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. However, Lincoln's proclamation would have little impact on Texans at the time due to the small number of Union troops available to enforce it. Two and a half years later, in June of 1865, more than 2,000 federal soldiers of the 13th Army Corps arrived in Galveston, and with them the Major General Gordon Granger, Commanding Officer, District of Texas. Granger delivered to Galveston General Orders No. 3, the order informed all Texans that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves were free. Reading, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the U.S., all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection here to four existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. In 1979, the Galveston Juneteenth Committee under the leadership of former city ma manager Doug Matthews and Texas Representative Al Edwards initiated an annual Juneteenth celebration on the, law, on the lawn of Ashton Villa at 2328 Broadway. The event commemorates the reading of the general orders through prayer, reflections, and community leadership. In 2006, the Juneteenth Committee within the city of Galveston erected a statue of the reading of the order that remains permanent, a permanent reminder to residents and the visitors of June 19, 1865 event. The city of Galveston transferred the building and grounds in November 2018 to the Galveston Historical Foundation, who has preserved and managed the property since 1970, continuing to remind us all that we still have to legislate our way to freedom. Thank you. Um, just want to say a couple of words about Tanisha. She has been uh, my partner in crime and helping us to build the Juneteenth Coalition. Um, it is something that we have been trying to do for a long time. Um, that Deborah, I call her Deborah O, uh, my sister was trying to, to um, work to make sure that we had so that there, again, we were, we were in a space of unity and not a competition. So I appreciate her and I appreciate um, as we lost her on this year, um, everyone stepping up to, to support. So I'm going to bring up next um, one of my good friends as well, Shaquanda Long from Juneteenth Freedom Fest, and she's going to do part two of the history. Ooh. 
so honored to be a part of the coalition and all of our efforts. I am Shaquanda Long, the founder and president of Juneteenth Freedom Fest NYC, JFF NYC. We host a large Juneteenth festival in Harlem, and our festival will be taking place June 15th at the Harlem State Office Building Plaza. That's 125th and 7th Avenue. You guys can join us on the 15th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's a great time for the whole family. Part two of our great illustrious history on Juneteenth. June 19, 1936, Juneteenth became the official day celebration in the Texas State Fair. Rep. Al Edwards of Houston, a Democrat congressman, wrote and sponsored a bill calling for Emancipation Day in Texas to be recognized as a legal holiday. He filed Bill 1016 in February 1979, and it passed in the Texas House of Representatives and Texas Senate the following May. Texas Republican Governor William Clements signed the bill in June 1979, and the bill officially went into effect on January 1st, 1980. In October 2020, New York State Assemblywoman Heidman and State Senator Kevin Parker's Juneteenth bill was made a New York State law. That's right. In June 17th of 2021, U.S. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris and members of Congress to amend Title V United States Code to establish Juneteenth Independence Day as a federal holiday for other purposes. As we mark 159 years later, NYC schools now observe the holiday, while not all corporations and businesses here in New York are considering the holiday a dedicated observance for their employees. In Hawaii and North Dakota, Juneteenth has been a day of observance since 2022, but is not considered a state holiday. What made an impact in unifying America for that day? In a holistic approach, they must ensure the observance for all of America. While days of observance must have a uniform procedure, holidays do not have this mandate embedded in their structure. Freedom was not a straight path from the Emancipation of Proclamation to Juneteenth, the Civil Rights Movement. Chattel slaves and their descendants had to fight we had to fight for every piece of freedom that they experienced and the struggle for racial justice that started long before the war did not end with the emancipation and there is still more work to do. Thank you so much, Akwanga. As you see, there's been a lot that we have been working on um, as, a, as a community and we're just glad to see the progress. Um, it's sad that we're in 2024 and we are still being the first of a lot of things, um, but we're hoping to see all of that change. Uh, next up, we have uh, the history and the meaning of the Juneteenth flag uh, by Cheryl. And Cheryl is from Murphy and J. Frederick Douglass Juneteenth. She's also a member of the National Juneteenth um, Foundation, which I am also a part of, so welcome. A pleasant good afternoon, everyone. I am again Ambassador Commissioner Cheryl D.B. Murphy, representing the Sixth Borough, New Jersey. I'm your cousin across the water. It gives me great pleasure here to be here with you again on our second annual flag raising here at the Bull. But I would like to take this moment to recognize our dear departing sister, Ia Deborah, as you all call her, O. I will ask you all for a moment of silence in her memory. She passed just April, but this was her dream. We had numerous conversations, numerous treaches, treaches, making it happen, and I know she is here today. So let's just have a moment of silence for my dear, dear sister, Ia Deborah Ia O Obatala.
Asheo, thank you so much. Again, I am representing Frederick Douglass Juneteenth Celebration, New Jersey, as well as National Juneteenth Observance Foundation. The National Juneteenth history for the Juneteenth flag created in 1997 by Ben Hayden. The Juneteenth flag, a symbol represents the end of slavery in the United States. The star represents Texas and was Gaveston, June 1985, 16, 1865, we have a typo in this, 1865, where the Union soldiers informed the country, last remaining enslaved people, that under the Emancipation Proclamation issued two years earlier, that they were free. The star also goes beyond Texas, representing the freedom of all African black Americans in all 50 states. The Boston outline around the star is impressed by the Nova, the term of the astronaut meaning the new star. On Juneteenth flag, this represents a new beginning for all black Americans of Gaveston and throughout the land. The curve that extends around the width of the flag represents the new horizon. The opportunity and promise that lay ahead for all black Americans. The colors are red, white, and blue. Symbolize the continuation, commitment of all people in the United States. To do better, to live up to American ideal of liberty and justice for all. And this is the Juneteenth flag. I love you all and thank you again. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Um, this has been a big debate and understanding the differences between the flags. Um, there are two flags. There is a Juneteenth flag um, that Cheryl just talked about, and now we're going to talk about the what is formerly known as the RBG flag, the red, black, and green flag, and that will be read by Dana Boyd from Staten Island. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for all being here today. It is a true honor of mine in Staten Island Community Alliance to represent and be a part of the Mayor's Juneteenth Coalition for all five boroughs. I hail from Staten Island, born and raised, and we welcome you on June 22nd at Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanical Garden to partake in a beautiful Juneteenth celebration that we have planned for you. I'll be handing flyers out, and I just would love to welcome you all to our borough, the borough of Parks, and unfortunately, sometimes the forgotten borough, but we have so much to offer, so please come and visit us soon. So the history and meaning of the Pan-African American flag, also known as the Afro-American flag and the Liberation flag, the distinct red, black, and green Pan-African flag was created in 1920. It was meant to serve as a marker of freedom, pride, and the political power of black Americans. Marcus Garvey was a Jamaican political activist, journalist, and speaker, as well as the founder of the Universal Negro Movement Association and African Communities League, also known as UNIA. With the help of friends and fellow activists, he established the organization to promote anti-colonialism and black nationalism. The Pan-African flag was created by UNIA members, including Garvey, in direct response to the anti-black folk song, Every Race Has a Flag, but the coon. Its creators intended for the flag to act as a unifying symbol for black people and to legitimize as a unified nation after hundreds of years of slavery and disenfranchisement. In the 1960s, the Pan-African flag became a symbol for the black liberation movement used by activist groups as a unifier and an emblem of power. Today, the flag is seen, today the flag is still a symbol. It can be seen during civil rights rallies, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, parades, and at other events. 
The flag was notably used during protests in response to the killing of Michael Brown in 2014. Red for the blood, black is for the race, and green is for the land. Today, the Pan-African flag is still a deep history, is still a deep history as a marker of black liberation and its use throughout prior civil rights movements. Lend power to people who waved the flag in 2024. Used in countless movements intended to end the black American struggle, the flag is simultaneously an indication of the advancements made and the work we still need to do to achieve justice. The flag is also recognized outside the U.S. during the late 20th century. Many newly liberated countries on the African continent use the Pan-African colors as a basis for their own newly minted flags, including Kenya, Libya, and Malawi. Kwanzaa, Juneteenth, and other black American celebrations also use the colors of the flag within their paraphernalia and, symbolog and symbology. This flag ha has established a precedent for how black Americans can identify their specific traditions and history. For many in the black community, the flag is a symbol of pride, unification, and change making. Thank you. Okay, so what color is the Juneteenth flag? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You're about to be killed down here now. <laughs> you weren't paying attention. Uh, so the Juneteenth flag is red, white, and blue. The Pan-African flag is red, black, and green. Okay? So, I mean, it's something I even had to, to share with our media partners so that they understand. So it's something that we have to continue to share with everyone so that everyone is aware. So I charge you all, now that you know, to let others know. Okay? All right, so next up, we have another one of my very close friends, uh, Miriam from Brownsville Heritage House. She'll be talking about Juneteenth's implications and how to acknowledge and celebrate it. Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone feeling this afternoon? I think it's such, such a historic day that we're sitting right here in Bowling Green where we were once the products and the stock that was being sold here in America. So I'm here, I'm from Brownsville Heritage House um, in Brooklyn, New York. We will be celebrating our Juneteenth celebration on June 15th after 26 years of celebrating. It will be at 3 p.m., 3 to 6 p.m. So please feel free to join us then. Juneteenth places black people at the center of the conversation. It talks about freedom. It puts freedom at the center of conversation. What freedom means and how it realized and how it was realized in this nation. It serves as a second independence day, while July 4th serves as a day about liberty. We didn't have liberty on July 4th. We were still enslaved in the country at that time. Both holidays are important because it is a shared history. Juneteenth reminds us through legislation, events, initiatives, and empowering that it empowers us, and empower in social equity resulting in resources, funding, and, equity, and opportunity and training programs. We are addressing historical inequities and facilitating access to capital and entrepreneurship. Juneteenth forces the economic growth and self-sufficiency within black communities. Overall, Juneteenth is a powerful catalyst for change and diversity by promoting education, representation, and economic empowerment. The federal holiday acknowledges the historical struggle and contributions of African Americans across industries and create a path towards a more equitable and inclusive future for all individuals. 
What that means for me, and for sure for all of us, it that leaves a legacy for us. It creates a legacy for our children. Let us never ever forget the struggles that we had here in America. When we talk about the diaspora, we're talking about freedom here in America, especially blacks in America. That is why that red, green, and um, black flag is about the global, and the Juneteenth flag is about us in America. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we leave legacy to our children, that our legacy is built on a foundation. We have self-sufficiency, economic development, and entrepreneurship. All things that you see here in America right now was built on the backs of blacks here because we were in, in, innovative. So. As you are celebrating Juneteenth this year, please keep in mind, like, keep in mind, like then and now, we want to still go have fights for our human rights and equality and communicate through our family cookouts, where we be savoring all that good, I know some people don't like watermelon, but we're going to have some watermelon, some barbecue, some greens and black eyed peas and most definitely make sure you spread it across social media. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miriam. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't share our events that we have going on. So my team has been looking at me like, so what's going on? Um, so for the Juneteenth NY group, our events will be held. Uh, our first event, we're doing a Black Kings honoring ceremony on June the 14th. Uh, well, we will be honoring our, oh, no, sorry, our 13th, thank you, June the 13th, we'll be honoring 21 African American men under the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Um, on the 15th, we will have our celebration, we'll be starting off with the largest parade that we've ever had in East Brooklyn. Woo! So uh, we will be doing that uh, with over a thousand people. We'll have a hundred members of um, the military who will be joining us um, for that. So we definitely hope that you come out to celebrate with us on that. And then we'll be going into a fabulous celebration where we have vendors and um, a showcase and we'll be ending it off with an amazing fashion show piece uh, which I'm wearing one of the garments from one of our designers now um, so we definitely hope that you come out and join us all right so next we have a presentation that we are going to share of the reading of the general order um, and that is coming from Dorcas Myers she's from Rock and Natural Cultural Foundation uh, also in Staten Island thank you Thank you to the Honorable Mayor of the City of New York, Eric Adams, to our dignitaries and other invited guests. I am Dorcas Myers, President of Rock and Natural Cultural Foundation, Inc., and producer of the third annual Staten Island Juneteenth Freedom Parade and Festival to be held on Saturday, June 15, 2024, at Tappan Park. I would like to introduce you to the Staten Island Juneteenth Freedom Players performing part of a historic reenactment of the reading of General Order Number 3 and Emancipation Proclamation.
three. The people are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore between them become that of employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. Lieutenant Omari, please read the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation Proclamation or Proclamation 95. That on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1,863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them and any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. Settle down. Remember, you must work for your wages now. That you cannot collect a military post and you cannot be idle. Company, attention. Company, back face. Company, forward march. And today, as we celebrate Juneteenth in a world that seeks out every opportunity to crush and diminish us, let us be sure to know that our freedom is real. All we have to do is believe it, stand tall in it, and keep moving like our ancestors. Once we do, any chain ever created to hold us down will fall broken and powerless at our feet. Another round of applause. Uh, we have Dorcas, we have uh, Lakeisha, uh, Alston Owens, we have Chris Dowling, we have Omari, um, we have Jesus Wesley Thomas. So thank you very much. Please give them again. I mean, they did an amazing job for you and everything. I can't take credit for that, although I would like to. Um, but I'm sure all of us who are doing our events. Um, across the city, uh, we'll have some form of that at their event. So again, please, please, please patronize one of them. All right, so we are moving along in the process. We are almost done. Um, next, uh, but first, before I even go on, I want to say thank you very much to our NYPD. Could you please give them a round of applause? 
are a part of supporting and encouraging us every day and making sure that we are safe. So I just want to give them their thanks and their flowers um, for all that they do and the appreciation from the bottom of our heart. So thank you. Um, so next I'm going to introduce uh, Michael Gardner, who is the Chief Business Diversity Officer. Afternoon. This is a very important event today. It was just mentioned that we were once slaves who built this country. But it's ironic that we're standing a few blocks from Wall Street. It's also ironic that hands that once picked cotton and tobacco are now picking mayors, are now picking presidents, are now picking United States Congress people. U.S. Senators. And so, I'm going to say this, that from 1619 to 2024, the struggle still continues. And fun fact, we talk about Galveston, Texas. Jack Johnson, who was the first black heavyweight champion in the world, was born in Galveston, Texas. And so, what is it, what does it mean for us to have our physical freedom when we don't have economic freedom. And so, Mayor Eric Adams has prioritized for the city of New York and its $41.1 billion annual procurement budget to make sure that the city of New York are spending those taxpayers' dollars not only in a cost-effective manner, but an inclusive manner. For the first time, we are prioritizing doing business with black-owned businesses, Hispanic-owned businesses, and if last year is any indication of what the Adams administration is doing, we awarded $6.3 billion to minority and women-owned businesses last year, $6.3 billion. And as the mayor has indicated, that he's not going to rest until by 2026, the city of New York will award at least $25 billion to minority-owned businesses, and by the year 2030, that number increases to $60 billion. And so, we want to recognize our very important stakeholders, the New York City Juneteenth Committee, and we want to recognize them and honor them as we move forward in an effective way of celebrating Juneteenth in the city of New York, the most important city on the globe, the way that it should be celebrated. First citation, the voice of youth changes everything. Juneteenth Freedom Fest, New York City. Rocket Natural Cultural Foundation. Juneteenth, NYC. <laughs> Juneteenth Committee of Mashad Malcolm Shabazz. Island Community Alliance. <laughs> National Juneteenth Observers Foundation, Jersey City Chapter. Brownsville.
Bill Heritage House. Co-Chief School of African Dance. She's not here. We will get her her citation. Please give a round of applause to the NYC Juneteenth Coalition. Thank you. All right, we have a council member uh, that is here that is about to give a brief remark. The mayor is, is on his way, so we just have the council member just give a brief remark. Good afternoon, everyone. I am council member Mercedes Narcis, and I do represent District 46. If you live in Canarsie, Flatland, Georgetown, Bergen Beach, Mill Basin, Mill Island, Marine Park, Garrison Beach, and Chipset Bay, I'm your council member. But it is a pleasure for me to be here this um, afternoon. And I have to say, you know, Michael, you've been great, amazing, for making sure that we are part of the equation. The part of the equation means Juneteenth, what it reminded us of, what took place. It is a time in history that we cannot forget. I just came from the mobile unit that's talking about African Americans. What we saying today, that we, I heard you as I was coming, we have a black mayor, we have a black speaker, we have so many advocates, public advocates in New York. We have a former president, Barack Obama. We have been going places, so many judges and most importantly, we cannot forget if we're not part of the money part, we're not making the progress that we want to make. You agree with me? So when they're talking about billion of dollars, I have to say thank you to Mayor Adams that understand that. Eric got it. That we need to be part of the decision making as well as the money part. My background is clear. I'm a registered nurse, but most importantly, I am a former entrepreneur. I used to have my business around the city of New York. And I know for a fact that if you tell me I'm part of the business, I have MWBE, and I cannot get the contract, so we're not putting our time for Juneteenth. Because what took place is to telling us that we cannot sleep at the will. We have to always making sure our brothers and sisters are taken care of. Because black people in America, we have to be relevant in every decision making, including billions of dollars that are going over our head. So I want to say thank you. The mayor is not here yet, but for the work that he's doing to make sure we address the inequities. We're not satisfied until we, wait, we are where we're supposed to be. What took place, that means it's a step, like it's a step back for us to move more forward and we can never forget what our ancestors did for us. So everywhere we are, continue talking about conversation that makes sense for black and brown people and most importantly, black people at the lower end. So thank you for being here. We're gonna raise the flag high and we're gonna continue fighting. Together, we can do it. Together, we stay together, we're gonna achieve amazing things in New York City. Thank you. I wanna thank you very much for coming out and for sharing a few words um, on our behalf. We are waiting for the mayor, he'll be here shortly. 
um, we will be uh, presenting both flags. We'll do first the uh, official American flag, and then we'll do the official June team flag. You know, we, we just talked about uh, economic freedom, having your physical freedom with no economic freedom is not the way that it should be. And we talked about how Mayor Adams has prioritized minority and women-owned businesses. Out of everything that he has responsibility of, in running the most important and most powerful city in the whole entire world, he has focused on economic impact, creating jobs in the black business community, affording contracts to black-owned businesses, creating jobs, affording those business owners home ownership opportunities, their respective families better educational opportunities and health care options. I want to introduce to you your mayor, the 110th mayor of the greatest city in the world, Mayor Eric Adams. Thank you so much. And just think about it. There was, there was uh, 109 mayors, and the Juneteenth flag was never raised here at Bowling Green. But in 2022, when I became the mayor of the city of New York, this location where slaves were traded and families were ripped apart, and I traveled to the continent of Africa and stood on the shores of Senegal and looked out from Gory Island, realizing that my ancestors left Africa in slavery, I returned with demerity. And that's the greatness of our resiliencies as African resiliency as African Americans and what we represent. And why it's so significant to raise this flag. But it's also significant not only to raise the flag, but to do an acknowledgement of our ancestors on how we got here. Look at where we are, people of African ancestry. Right now, you have the mayor of the most important city on the globe is from African ancestry. You have the congressman who is leading the minority party in Congress for the first time, Hakeem Jeffries, African ancestry. Jemani Williams, public advocate, African ancestry. Letitia James, the attorney general of the state of New York, African ancestry. Majority leader in the state senate, Andrew Stewart Cousin, African ancestry. Carl Hastie, the assemblyman, the speaker, African ancestry. You look down the list and you will see that Juneteenth may not have been the day when we acknowledge the ending of slavery, but now we see the accumulation of all of our prayers, all of our ancestors, all of our fighting. America is a great country because they had hundreds of years of free labor that we built America. Don't be ashamed of who we are and what we are. I am unapologetic. I love this country deeply. I believe this country has provided so much for so many. But let's not get it mixed up. I'm American, but I'm African. I'm African, and I am proud to be African as any other ethnic group in this country should be proud to be. And we need to continue to understand the significance of the moment when we do these flag raisings. So many countries never had their flag raised in Bowling Green because this city often was dismissive of other ethnic groups as though they did not exist. No one noticed them. Well, I see them. I see them and I know how proud they are when I raise their flags for the first time when I became mayor. My role as mayor is not only to raise their flag but raise the people of this city because being a mayor is not only substantive, it's symbolic. Symbolism is so important. And if you don't believe symbolism is important, look how things are done whenever something is not coordinated in a proper fashion. But also, as we raise the flag, look over to the left of me and see these men and women of African ancestry that are now members of the New York City Police Department, the greatest police department on the globe as they continue to keep us safe. This is the same police department that at one time was used to hold down those of African ancestries 
Now we see their presence and we see them rise up to the occasion. Many flags are raised and I'm happy to raise them and I'm proud this moment as we celebrate Juneteenth and what it means uh, to all of us. And as we have these young scholars that are here watching us and looking at us, let's hope this plants a seed in them that they should be proud not only to be Americans, but also to be Africans. We are African Americans, and on June 10th, we celebrate all that we have contributed to this great country. This country is great because we made it great. Congratulations to you. Let our reach 
rejoicing Rise high as a listening sky Let it resound loud as the rolling sea Sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has torn